probably gonna run out of gas. I ain't checked that in a while. <laughs> Morning. We're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Man, oh man, here we go again. Back with some half haul action. And uh, I wish I was feeling better. I'm not. Uh, but last week, I bit off way more than I could chew with this thing. We were trying to lift it, buff it, give it a makeover. And I had this great idea. I was going to uh, fix all this mechanical stuff too. And I just, I overloaded my britches and I overloaded my brain. If last week's video didn't prove that I overloaded my brain, I don't know what does, guys. Of course, y'all know I'm talking about that lift, lift spacer I built that I just was so focused on other crap, I didn't even think about the shock. Totally forgot about it, uh, which I don't care, whatever. We we whipped up some shock mounts. I mean, hell, what do y'all think C channel's for, huh? It's for when you forget you got shocks and you gotta fab up some new mounts. That's what it's for. It's the whole reason they designed the crap. I don't care about that. I am disappointed in myself uh, for not considering the leverage that was gonna go into the front end. And I said, I wanted to lift the front end inch and a half and I turned around and built an inch and a half spacer. I'm disappointed in myself over that one. Because anybody uh, who knows anything about suspension, which I like to think I do, uh, knows that we shouldn't have made that spacer an inch and a half. Because since this A-arm pivots, uh, we get leverage in this mix. And with that being about in the dead center of that A-arm, we get about a two to one a ratio actually, which means I should have made that spacer about three quarters of an inch. And then uh, it probably would have went right up in there and I wouldn't have wasted a whole day. And uh, I wouldn't have been so frustrated that I didn't even want to pull it back apart. So I probably would have took the spacer back out and cut out a hole where we could have just let our shock right up in. But what's in the past in the past, okay? We can't, we can't live there and bask in it. Now, I just told you, two to one ratio we should have done three quarter to get an inch and a half we did an inch and a half so we were trying to get three inches of lift just i mean strong arming them babies with that coil spring which is why she is stiff uh, like she was so i gotta cut those things in half guys if, if we're gonna drive this thing at all we gotta get it a little better so we gotta hit her with the trim job we've got a list of mechanical stuff i think today we're gonna pull the transmission out of it uh, now don't you worry about the old quick attach crane here. Yeah, I know you like that baby right there, don't you? Mm. Oh, she's good. Some days around here we feel like doing some welding. Now we got her D-ringed up in there. And the whole build of this thing, you can find it. You can find it on the Puddin's Fab Shop 2, our second channel. Whole little video whipping this thing up. The old parking brake ain't working so good. Been trying and trying to get y'all two videos a week and uh, I hope y'all go over there and check that out. Now there's something else y'all been wanting that I've been trying to get you in this week. Well, giddy giddy, it's time for you to get it. Mama, mama, did it raise no punk? You dang right, y'all been wanting it. Uh, there she is, mama did it raise no punk. Puddin's fabrication shop. Throw a little pinstriping on that baby, how's that? So you got the logo on the front. Some of you are thinking pudding. I don't want a mama didn't raise no punk shirt. I kind of like your logo, but I also like patina like you like. Well, say no more, cause boom. Patina logo in stock. She's patinered out right there, folks. And then lastly, and also leastly, because it took the longest to get in and we ain't messed with the sausage wagon in a while. Uh, but nonetheless, right there, we got the sombrero on the front. And we got that old sausage wagon on the back. All available right now, www.puddingsfabrication.com. We appreciate all y'all support. 
In fact, I think we'll just rock this baby during this video. Uh, now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like my ass whipping ability just went up about 77%. Uh, now be careful of that because for you results may vary, you know, I don't know uh, But of course if we've got them in a shirt. We've got them in a sticker, too Yeah, don't worry we got big old base we can fill up too. So we appreciate all the support there guys uh, Let's turn to this front end and strap up them knee pads because we're about to fly through this Just pop that wheel off, that brake caliper, and boom, you're shocked. We're already halfway there. Crap goes faster when you ain't playing no games. What did Riff Raff say? He said he dropped out of school because of recess. Too many games. <laughs> And if you're worried about that shooting out of there, uh, that thing's so compressed in there, it couldn't shoot out of there if it thought about it. It could have been that Coil Springs hope and dream to shoot out of there, and it would have been a disappointed kid with a broken soul. You don't shoot out of there till I say you shoot out of there. Coming down, coming down, slow and steady. Uh, that crap falls right out of there once you get her whoop, far enough. So right here's the goal. I'm going to take this from the bottom of this lip. We're going to mark down uh, 9 sixteenths. And then that way when you factor in the 3 sixteenths lip, we get the, we get the 3 quarter inch we should have put in there the first time. Mark around with that tape. Now we're going to use the slice and dice for a nice clean cut. With that right there, we can pop that coil up in there with a pry bar. No spring compressors. Now that's what happens when you don't have the 19 inch lift spacer. When I had that good crop, so I'd get up early in the morning, be out there waiting for that squirrel to show up. Before we set that down all the way, let's turn this wheel all the way to the right. So as you can see right there, she clears. But if you have her turned all the way and you're gassing it hard, actually driving, you can barely get it into there. We could trim that corner off if we wanted. I don't think it's worth worrying about right now, guys. I told y'all she's gonna end up four wheel drive one day, but we ain't gonna talk about that right now. We just wanna see if she's gonna possibly ride a little better. Oh yeah. And that feels a hell of a lot better. Now it is bouncier than factory suspension, but I can actually move it. Oh yeah, she rides a thousand, maybe a million times better, guys. She's good, guys. We got a drivable truck again. Oh yeah, she's just a damned old work rig. Let's check the shitter here, make sure, make sure she's flowing. Oh, she's flowing. See, work rig. Every two weeks, we pull a uh, shitter security duty with it. She's probably gonna run out of gas. I ain't checked that in a while. <laughs> I knew I should have checked her before we left. Well, there's a little in her. It's just all, uh, it's all on the wrong side. Maybe if we give her the tilt job. Just kind of wedge her there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> I 
Give her hell, we're going home. All oh, right, so much better. Looky there, we made her back into the shop, ready to do some work. The verdict, she rides rougher than factory, but way better than she did. Uh, now, we're gonna look at getting a, a clutch up in this piece. So, we gotta uh, do a little transmission pulling. Hello, and thank you for tuning in today on PFS Television Station Set. We are going to be doing an instructional video on how to change a clutch on your Ford Courier half haul. Step one, elevate the vehicle and then secure it in place with safety stands. Next, you want to safety check that hoe. Well, that ain't the best creeper we've ever had, but let's get up underneath here and kind of take a look-see. And I have pulled a four-speed from the E-Haul, but I don't remember deadly about it, if I'm being honest. What the damn security lock we got going on here? U-Haul put governors on, on these rigs, and uh, they use the speedo cable for input, so I wonder if they put that there where you can't disconnect it. I don't know, just spitballing here. Well, I knew this rig was supposed to be in Pot County. If, if that and that don't tell you so, I don't know what does. Uh, we're going to start with disconnecting this battery, actually, before we start messing with that starter down there. She actually has a functioning tight terminal. That's pretty impressive. I would have lost money on that one. I'm going to throw us a bunch of tools down here. We're just going to jump right into it. Go for a long shot back here. Oh yeah, maybe we'll get some on them bolts. <laughs> we're going to start with doing a little cleaning and lubing of stuff we know we're going to take apart. There we go. Then that way we get it dripping everywhere where we're guaranteed to make a mess. Especially, that's really good today because the city announced we ain't gonna have no water pressure today. So I won't be able to take a shower. We got volleyball at four, so perfect. I think there's three bolts in these. Damn nose cone on this unit's longer than a Monday. There we go, she's out the way. There we go. That'll work. We better get that last bolt out there before we forget her. All right, now fill the bell housing bolt there and over here. I don't remember if we got to pull these little dust shield bolts or not, but we're going to just go ahead and snag them since we're here. We'll get both of them puppies. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, she had a little torque on her anyhow. That one's playing real nice and coming out super easy. That's what we like right there. Now, of course, you got to get your transmission, exhaust clamp, bracket, thingamajigger there. See his damn near finger loose too. Looky there. I wouldn't have guessed that. See two more bolts there. And oh yeah, I forgot they put this damn stiffener bracket whatever that is on there we probably should have pulled everything we could have got from up top before we jacked the front end up and crawled underneath here that probably would have made a little more sense but that's okay we're gonna work it till we get it nonetheless kind of having luck with reaching old ratchet and ricky up in there knocking her loose and then uh we're coming out by hand <laughs> oh yeah hey maybe maybe today's our lucky day here boom baby come to sweet papa with all the torque off them water's coming out from there so that's a good sign just a little puddle there i'm gonna go ahead and pull our slave cylinder off here since i can reach those two bolts we should have a new slave cylinder for her anyhow That off there, we can spin this around to kind of have a look-see here. She's got a tiny bolt up in there. 
I ain't got that special socket, but I do got a grinder. That old slice and dice will motivate her off of there nine out of 10 times. Now we can slap our little retainer back on. Slap a little torque on her. And then uh, now we can pull that off. Got that damn chastity belt or whatever they call those damn things off there. <laughs> Gotta have more than that to keep me out, okay? I don't know what happened to our old Milwaukee here, but something just happened to that switch. She ain't working. Them bolts might have been half torqued, but I don't think this thing needs bolts. Shit. Man, there we go. That's plumb ridiculous. Look how dirty and crunchy that hole is. There ain't nothing wrong with this, by the way. Uh, I didn't know that had a lock button on it, so she was just locked. Learn something new every day. Drop that carrier bearing down. I got our drain pan up there, so maybe we'll catch our fluids here as we slide this out the back. There we go. Woo, that thing was not happy. There's our transmission cross member. I think I've got everything except for a shifter here. The only thing I'm not real sure about is that little cradle extension bracket thingamajigger that hangs off the bottom of the motor that bolts to the transmission bell housing. I don't know if we gotta take it all the way off or not. I don't think we do. I think she's kind of like an extendo kit of the uh, bottom of her engine, but we'll find out, I reckon. Pull those four bolts and we pull that shifter and we're gonna shove our towels down in here and try to keep some debris out of that anyhow there we go have you girls stretched out today don't want to tear a damn rotator cuff i don't know what that thing's called feel like bench pressing hell you better because uh we ain't got transmission jack we got regular jack but you know these little little mini truck transmissions we curl them, so we'll damn sure bench press them. Hit that with the zip tie bag special. <laughs> Ow. Oh. I just found that pinch wheel at the bottom of that rocker with my knee. It's still there. Oh. There it go. There we go. We'll shove that little rink dink out the way. Pressure plate off. Damn, everything on this thing's a 14 millimeter. Ah oh, yes, I remember these now. I'll show you why here in a second. That's one way to drop her out of there. Oh, she's been hot and she's grooved all over. Holy crap. Same with that baby. <laughs> well, she ain't original, I can tell you that much. See if she'll drop off there. Come on, baby. There we go. 
Now I remember these because when I put the one back up in the e-haul, was it this one? Yeah, I flip-flopped it and had it backwards. I got the transmission stabbed and then uh, went to put bolts in and that's when I then realized it was flip-flopped and backwards. We're just gonna act like we don't see that oil in there, okay? Don't worry about that. Next, we're gonna get our pilot bearing out of there. I'm gonna test our bolt here, make sure that's nice and tight, and it is. I wrap that in in a few wraps of tape, that way she hopefully seals. Because, as y'all know, I like to use the bread trick. Get your favorite loaf, everyone. It's time to knock out a pilot bearing. Just like our tuna, we want this baby with no crust. You take that old bread and you just start stuffing her in that motor. Just water up and get buck nasty. If it gets tight fit, take that bolt and give her a couple taps. Oh, she'll take a little more, won't she? Y'all think I'm playing, but that's the fastest way guaranteed every time. There it went. Then that bread comes right back out and you're good to go. Just like poop in the shape of a pretzel. I shit you not. It works. Told you we could curl these suckers. Uh, look how tiny this little thing is. Boy, she's got all the grease in there on that. Uh, now, when I first started using the truck out there, I thought I heard the throwout bearing kind of screaming every now and then. That was the first thing that made me want to get in on this. Yeah. She feels all right. She don't feel all crunchy. Besides this, I slipped that clutch quite a bit when we were using her as a tow truck. Oh yeah, if you're if you're not low geared enough, uh, you just slip that clutch and you basically get two to one reduction with some clutch slippage. As good as that looks, uh, this looks terrible. The flywheel's kind of grooved, not as bad as that pressure plate is though. Well, 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 what do we have down in here? Before we slap that in, uh, the transmission out's really easy. Well, it's easier to get to the rubber hose for our slave cylinder, and we want to replace all that crap anyhow, so let's get her dead. Don't worry about them brake hoses. Uh, sometimes they're hard to get, so I'll take them all, please. Motorcraft, we're getting fancy. Don't even know. Don't even care. hey yo, there we go. Just playing, that's for up top. There we go, bet that's her. Looks close enough to me. Last time I tried to order a rubber hose for the clutch specifically, uh, they couldn't get them, but the ones for your brakes, they're only a little longer, it'll work the same, and if you can't get them, well that's because I bought them all, like I just said. <laughs> a rubber hose ain't in the worst shape, but might as well since we're here. These are line wrench there, and we're gonna get her popped off. Just a thousand little baby turns will get you there. Kind of like a brake line, there's a clip on that. Get her fished out there with them channel locks. Yeah, she's a little wet down in there. That may have been our, our small leak down in there. So you can see what I mean about this one being a little longer, but that just means extra fluid. Kind of assemble this slave here, and or pull that plug this little copper washer here hopefully that's the right one one thing about it it'll seal or it won't oh she's tight anyhow let's see if we can wiggle worm her back up in there get her slipped up in place next the magic trick here is to get this retaining clip back on her this bottom nut interlocks to that which is nice with her key interlocking feature it obviously makes the tightening the hard line a lot easier into it, so hopefully we don't spin it out of there. Kill! <laughs> I pushed so hard I sprouted an ab, guys, right there. I can feel it. 
as tight as that is, we do not want that leaking up in there. Could you imagine trying to tighten that up with, uh, with the transmission back in this thing? That'd be no fun. Speaking of no fun, you know what else is no fun on these? Those oil filters that's right there. Uh, we may want to do this while, while we're down here too. Let's get our old drain pan here. Damn! We may not get the drain plug out this unit. Oh, so we've been in there for a minute. I'm gonna hold her and hope for the best. How's that? Oh yeah, here she comes. That ain't too bad. We'll be all right. As long as old left arm don't get tired and give out. Oil smells good. Oh yeah, she does. That's the best oil I've sniffed from one of our old junkie rigs in a while. And I'm a professional oil sniffer. I sniff them all big or small. Old, young, worn out, brand new. I sniff it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> As she gets heavier, you got to keep her balanced or she'll go. I started this thinking we were going to make a big old mess, but we just, little drip drop, nothing bad. Uh, uh. That's caveman for I wish I felt better. Pop our drain plugger back in and we're going to work her way back to that oil filter. Oh, there you go. You got a little something right there on your cheek. There we go. Got a little turn on her anyhow. Y'all know I got them weak hands, so I got to use them little oil filter wrench pliers. Oh, yeah. Just thread her off there. So, what did we learn about these today, huh? We learned the easiest way to change the oil on one of these is to pull the transmission to change your filter. This was the Car Quest 85085. Made in USA. We're gonna give her a little bit of oil in there anyhow. We're gonna replace that baby with the Wix 51068 Premium Half Haul Filter. Don't worry about that little extra oil. It ain't an oil change if you don't get oil everywhere, okay? So don't worry about that. Here we go. Kind of throw her down in there. I like to make sure that oil filter's covered in oil or she's a challenge to start. We're rocking and rolling now, baby. We're gonna torque her good. Just give her the business. So we got our hydraulics ready. We got our oil swapped out and uh, we're ready to go back with all this. I guess we didn't really look around underneath here, did we? Everything's got surface rust. Uh, the front end's plumb blown out. Look at them ball joints and uh, tie rods and everything. See a little cancer in our floorboard right there. Uh, I guess if someone was sitting in there, we could probably tickle their feet if we wanted. Rockers and stuff all look pretty solid on her. Uh, she's not terrible. At the same time, she ain't overly impressive. Uh, for us and just a truck we can whoop on, I think she's perfect. Yesterday was my first time kind of seeing up underneath here and really looking around, I guess. There's a throw out bearing, and over here I set. That's the one that needs to go up in there. There's our pilot bearing. I mean, that old disc wasn't plumb worn down or nothing. Now, pressure plate's a different story. Now, let's go get all these goodies up in there. We need to knock our new bearing in. Uh, bread's not required for this, which is good because she's a little stale today. That's a crouton now. So you can see a hole right here. Uh, you can see where that used to be on the back of our uh, flywheel. So I'm gonna put her up there with her just index the same way. The threads of these were just plumb filthy from being down there on the ground. They were full. You could see stuff reflecting in there like little metal shavings looking almost, dirt, grime, whatever. As much fun as it is to cross thread stuff, I ain't trying to cross thread stuff. Gonna we'll give each bolt one drop of blue, uh, just because when I opened up my toolbox, that's what was sitting there. She'll hold until she does it. The disc tells us that's our flywheel side, so we're gonna 
flip that around with our uh, little alignment tool in there. There we go. Cheryl sure Supply Games, we can play games. Uh, I gave her two full wraps, electrical tape, took the wiggle room clean out of her. I also remember uh, we have two bolts that are longer that hold this pressure plate on. And I can see a shoulder on this one and a shoulder on this one. So we'll start those two first. God bless it. Y'all thought I would have learned my lesson the first time with these dust covers, but here I go leaving them off again. That's what I did last time. I left it off, then I threw it on there, not paying attention, put it on there backwards. And then for the third on the third time I finally got it right. <laughs> Good fun stuff, you know. So I pulled this crap off. She's on there, facing the right way. And we even polished up this with a little brake clean job. For torquing those, I like to use this. I run it down and then kind of, you know, judge it, torquing them all by hand or whatever. Because, uh, you know, using a torque wrench is overrated. Now they're then our mess in our way. That side's ready for a transmission, so let's get this side ready to go in. Our kit came with spline lubricant, so she's going to get a little shot of it. Then we're going to get our throw out bearing on and make sure she's interlocked. She's good. Yeah, don't worry. If she ain't got a little sledge, then she ain't doing something right. Get! 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 And just like old Jason from the Friday the 13th, when he finds two kids doing the hanky panky in an abandoned house they shouldn't be in. You <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stab this sucker. Make that thing pop a wheelie where you can get up underneath her. Then you gotta take her forward of the cross member. Then you wanna work her up and over that. And then from there, she pretty much goes straight up. There we go, that was perfect. She was real close to seating all the way. It just, it had a little. Uh, so I reached up in there on the on the flywheel and I just turned her a hair. Uh, just that way our splines wasn't rubbing and boom, she popped right in. As much fun as it is to watch me put all this crap back together. Now that's all we're doing guys. The way it came apart, whoop, right back together. We will look at the drive shaft when we get to it. So speaking of uh, drive shaft, now, Putting all that back together wasn't too bad. We got our starter on, our little slave cylinder, all the bell housing bolts. Uh, but this, she's a little worn out. Woo, that metal U joint right in there is crunchy. Oh, how crunchy? She'll hold herself up crunchy. Oh, that sounds real good. Here's the thing though, uh, when we make this thing four wheel drive, we're gonna have to address our drive shafts anyhow. So I wanna do as little as possible. Uh, this bearing is somewhat existent, but maybe we can do something a little better than that. She sounds like she's in tip top shape. Well, rather conveniently, uh, this roll of tape just happens to fit in here. This is going to take a damn hour and a half. <laughs> it's all right. I ain't got nothing else better to do. And when this thing gets to turning at first, if you smell burning tape, that's just her doing some self-clearance. And, and I know you can go get you a tube of polyprothamethylene and fill it full of caulking and crap and let it sit overnight you just want to get some of that good poly mount that's how you make her poly mount but uh i don't want to wait so we're just gonna 
keep building her up here we should be getting pretty close right in here uh, let's rip this off and see how we're doing oh looky there we may win a little too much let's take off a couple wraps oh yeah looky there you can be mad at it if you want but if it works it works that's right most folks didn't know i was in the uh drive shaft restoration business they'll tape little looby dooby and she's ready for another 100k say those are pretty tight and lastly we're going to take her shove her right there now before this thing could flop all over the place and look at that she's got a little play but that thing is solid almost forgot to hook up our couple of wires here we go get them She's ready for some speed shifting. Oh, 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 mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Mainly I did that because I really like the smell of gear oil. That's not true. I tell y'all I don't have depth perception. I thought we were that far away from the top. <laughs> Got her filled up and happy. Let's go up top to the old engine. Well, I got gear oil down there. I got it over here. I, hell, I damn near got it everywhere besides in that transmission. Uh, I want to go up here, though, and slap the oil on this thing before we forget because we did drain it and change the oil filter. Because I know I'm forgetful, so I'll get ahead of myself and forget to put oil in it. Then I'll start it, and uh, we'll hear a little clankety-clankety oh yeah good fit right there i don't remember how much these engines hold now luckily i've got awesome subscribers and someone sent out a yeehaw manual right here and as sir pudding with all the power hereby invested in me i do state this book qualifies as a half haul manual as well. Look at our table O contents and recommended lubric lubricants and fluids, page 11. So class, would you please turn to page 11 and oh boy, howdy. One day we're gonna find us one of these first gens. If you like full size Fords, but you don't like those many trucks, I don't know what's wrong with you because that just looks like a condensed version of the, of the full size. Uh, yeah, we're going to find one, then we're going to find us a clean one. One day, some way. Here we go. Uh, this book must have been sponsored by Castrol, because that's all you're allowed to put in this, according to them. Well, God bless America. After reading about 17 chapters, I found it. Here's our 2300 uh, oil capacity with filter change, 5 quarts. That's why I don't read, folks. I ain't got time for it. And I'm not very good at it. And I just don't like it. But today, it let us know what we needed to know. So we're just going to trust that old book. And we're going to dump the rest of that in there. And we're just going to let her have that all five quarts. There you go. That should make her happy. We ended yesterday on fluids. We're going to start today on fluids. Well, kind of. We're going to get our hard line here popped loose. Any of the trucks we plan on keeping for a while, I like to give uh, good new stuff where, you know, hopefully we just replace all this crap bleeder once and we're done. One and done, baby. See how dirty that crap is in there? Probably not a bad idea to replace her. I think even down in here was pretty filthy. We have a quick little look-see here. Oh. That thing leaked off. I topped it off, uh, but it don't look like it's dropped any since then. Maybe it was leaking, maybe it was empty. Maybe it's perfectly fine. Either way, we're replacing it. Reach up back there and you pull the cotter pin out of that pin. Then maybe we can 
Oh, maybe she'll come out here and play with us. You want to come play? Oh, yeah. She'll come on out. Can you see all that sparkling metal shavings in there? Something was breaking down. All right, here's our newbie. Of course, our new one. Whoop. She's just going to slide right in. Oh, she's pinned and ready. And our cotter pin was a little tricky. Y'all see the spring on this? That's big enough for a damn full-size trampoline. You stop and go in this truck about three times, and your left leg's got its workout in for the day. I guarantee it. Oh, torque her down. Give her a little drink of some fresh fluids. We're ready to see if we can bleed that thing off and get us a pedal again. <clears throat> she was sealed in there good. Don't worry about that acorn up in there. That's for extra horsepower. Gives you extra horsepower that's just nuts. There's also a little sprinkle of mouse poo-poo in there. Getting that out the way gives us arm room to work around here, which is good because we can get to the uh, bleeder on the slave cylinder through here. Pop that loose and it's gotta be a nine mil because 10 mil would just be too common. I got our solo sucker uh, rigged up here. Get it down there on that bleeder and start giving her some pumps. I can already see the fluid over here in the reservoir dropping. Did y'all hear that? That probably be the last time we get to use this considering uh we're shooting fluid out the back it'll knock the seals clean out of this thing did manage to tighten her up as i had some vacuum on it though It feels like a good pedal. Uh, that could be our 100 pound spring up there. Since we already got the beautiful smell of a brake cleaner in the air, why don't we go ahead and uh, just kind of flush and bleed these brakes. I said the pedal's kind of soft, so I don't know if they've got a little air in them. I ain't found no leak on it. Uh, we could be losing a master cylinder, you know, I don't know. I don't have one of them to replace, I don't think. We'll try bleeding it, see if that gets us by until we get different axles underneath this thing. Reservoir was definitely low, so we're gonna fill it up. Good quality stuff in there. We're gonna give it a Fox County rebuild real quick. It's so nasty down in there. I don't think we would have got uh, just clean fluid without cleaning this out at least. Of course, we're going to keep our tops off and just work our way around doing a little flushing. That pneumatic one is noisy, but man, does it work good. Oh, you dang right. That's stiffer than she's ever been right there. I think it's safe to say there was some air in there, and obviously it was nasty. Uh, hell, I think we can drive this thing now. I set it down on the ground, and I, I was about to go drive it around just to feel the clutch and brakes, but I'm also planning on putting a timing belt on this thing, and it probably wouldn't be the smartest to get it all nice and hot to then work on the cooling system. <laughs> hey, sometimes I think with my noggin before I act. Sometimes. Now, I did the timing belt on the Yeehaw, but I really don't remember much about it. Uh, I think I set it at top dead center and then went for it, so we're going to do the same thing here. So to set it at top dead center, we're going to pull number one spark plug.
put our cable back on and we're gonna hook up our, our little cheater switch here now not too long ago someone asked me what my favorite one was uh, this OTC brand I'd say this is probably the most heavy duty one I've had and I like it a lot I know that black and yellow wire goes down to our starter solenoid so I shove that in there then we put our switch to it and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our coil here see a little fuel in our bowl there so she may want to fire up if we leave spark on now let's see if she turns over now I'm gonna put my finger uh, in this number one hole down here as it comes around on compression stroke it's gonna shove my finger out of there I know you heard it that's because this thing's got premium compression we're gonna go with bumps now right there you can see two white marks on our dust cover down there our pointers all the way over here and those two marks look like someone added them thought there was supposed to be a notch or, or something on there but i don't see one now luckily i can see down in there and actually see the top of the piston so i'm gonna turn the motor by hand and find where i think uh top dead center is here should be right in there and we're pretty well between our two marks there if i was a betting man i'd say someone's a had this at top dead center before and they did exactly what i just did they looked and when it first stopped moving they made a mark they uh took it a little further when it started going back down they made a mark and uh in between there they're using that as top dead center i think that kind of made sense we're gonna pull this off because i'm happy with where it's at and we're gonna pull a radiator and stuff out of here earlier i got us a dedicated pan for antifreeze here well, this is coming right out. It didn't even try to fight us. I was worried it was going to want to break. That is definitely the best coolant we've ever got out of anything we've had. Ow! Shit talky mushrooms. Knocked the tip of that finger clean off. I think I just ripped that hose and I didn't mean to. Yeah, she split right there. One nut at a time, we're going to pull our fan. Life's like mechanic and guys, you just got to get through it one nut at a time. Because life is just like assembling something, guys. Just nuts and bolts. I don't know. Not sure what y'all are thinking about. Our fan shroud's held on with four screws to the radiator. So we're going to pull them and then we'll just slide both of them up out of there at the same time. We got a smog pump in our way down there. So I'm going to put that on there for a little leverage. And of course, she's going to strip out. Luckily, we managed to wiggle the drill in there and drill that out. Four bolts get you a radiator. I better gather all of our hardware here before I lose it, because guaranteed I'll lose it. Put her in her little magnet dish right there. Now we definitely got plenty of working room for the front of this engine here. Loosen our alternator. Pop that belt off. Now she's a Gates belt. Yeah, yeah, she's cracked. Got our pulley and our spacer. Get her shoved off there. Pull our thermostat housing off. So he's kind of wanting to stay in there. And let's see if she'll come off there. Looks like one, two, three bolts gets us our water pump. Get our old paint marker here. You can see our pointer right here is pointing at our notch right here. So uh, we've got her lined up right. Next, we're going to pull this off down here. That's a little top hat bolt. Extremely high end. She 
came off really easy. I don't think we necessarily had to have a puller. Uh, I mean, it was pretty much coming off by hand. Next, we need to get our belt off here. I'm gonna check our marks one more time, make sure they're still good, and they are. So, here's how I get tension off of this myself. We're gonna find us a socket for up in there. I think she's a 13. Then our tensioner here, she's a 17. Uh, what works for me is using the old wrist saver. I put that on there uh, where she's ready to tighten up and you grab that tensioner and you squeeze that and when you get it off the belt then you tighten that and it'll lock it in place. About like so. Now to hold it where you can slip that right off. Now I remember doing that. I don't remember what I had to do to uh, swap that out though. Our belt looked in pretty good shape. I think someone's probably replaced it if I was a betting man. And after we release that, which hopefully we didn't booger the threads because I wasn't thinking, uh, that bolt right there takes our tensioner right off. Let's give her the spin test and see if she sounds as good as our uh, carrier bearing. So I thought I was hearing throw out bearing. I may have heard this thing singing every once in a while. Before we go back with anything, I'm gonna scrape all these old gaskets and just get everything cleaned up. That super scraper I got from Mortsky sure does a good job. I guess that's drilled right through there. We may put some thread tape on them bolts. So let's look at getting some of our new goodies on here. That tensioner ain't near as loud as our old one. Tighten our alternator down. Then we're just going to pry off the case of it where we can get our bolt started. Hold tension, same way. I took it from this way around and uh, all those went right in, bringing her slack to here. She popped right on. Release the tensioner. Got that all tightened down and that's how you do it or how I do it since I ain't got the actual thing for it but you got to have one of these now that being said even if we didn't have that I guarantee you we could still do it with a damn ratchet okay because mama didn't raise no punk you can still figure it out it looks like someone had some type of thread tape on our old water pump bolts you know I like that blue stuff so they're gonna get a wrap or two of the blue who knows, that may have been where that very tiny leak just started coming from because I, I really couldn't tell where it was coming from. Take our fancy new water pump here and our gasket we trust, slap it back on. We're also going to replace this little piece of hose. That could also be where we were maybe leaking. Get our old clamp off here. Had to run the slicks and uh, pick up a little piece of hose. Yeah, I forgot about this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Index them where we can tighten on those if we have to. Get that cleaned up. Now we got the Takucher here. Oh, damn. We're going to hit her with the old drill a hole in her trick. Now I hit that with some of that red stuff because, uh, those are pretty thin, the little thermostat housings are. Then we get our hub back on here and she keys, so it's only gonna go one way. It's gonna put her pulley on, but you see all the dirt down in there? We just gained 10 horsepower getting rid of all that. Got our adapter all put together there. We're kind of to the point where we throw on our belt and get a radiator and hoses in. Uh, I called the parts house and they can have me all three brand new in the morning. So we're going to go ahead and wait that way. We might as well because here's my luck. 
I'll throw this old crap on, and in a week or so, it's going to be leaking antifreeze, and it's going to be coming from the radiator hose, and we're going to have to drain it and do it then. So we're just going to wait and do it now. So I was sitting here contemplating life, and by con contemplating life, I mean I was contemplating taking all this stuff off. Y'all have seen me take off before, but man, this thing runs good. Now in the future, when she's a four-wheel driver, she may need a little more power, and we may have to do a little carburetor swapping or something like that. But for now, I think we leave it alone, and since that won't, we can't touch it till the morning, uh, maybe we look at our little gas tank situation. And I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't impressed with what they cooked up for a gas tank here. I don't know what they glued that in there with, but the fact that it held up, I'm impressed. Lock her down with a fatty, and then on two L brackets on top of that, return line out of brake line. I don't know how you guys aren't impressed. And apparently at one point they had the battery back here because there's this one. That one's been cut. But I noticed it runs along the frame rail. And uh, just the other day, as in like yesterday, I noticed it came all the way up here. So when we fit her out with quadruple winches and uh, we need extra battery power, she done set up for it. Now we had that nut started up in the... Uh, e-haul but as you can see they ripped out you can tell I'm getting real picky here right I think she's pretty solid of course this is the easy one because starting the hardware on the other one's gonna be a pain in the rear Starting our top one wasn't bad. I didn't think I'd be able to reach it, but it wasn't that bad. Of course, we need to hook up our line, so we'll probably just pull all this crap through here. This right here is bolted to the frame, so this is probably the one that's cut. Yep. Yeah, she's cut on this end now, too. Pull our other cable out. I don't think we're going to keep her on the truck neither. If you're curious, here's our fuel pump bouncing around, okay? So it ain't even mounted. So this one's obviously our pickup. And it goes from our fuel pump through this thinga majigger valve. Uh, maybe some type of check valve or something, I don't know. And uh, then to our hard line finally. Then our return goes from that hard line to that piece of crap, to this piece of crap, to this piece of crap. And then I'm pretty sure once it gets up there, it goes to that brake line to then another rubber hose. So what I'm saying is from the hard line right here underneath the cab to the tank, we're just going to replace all that baloney. Nope. That was smart. That's how you get gas all down your armpit. Oh, yeah. Just broke that whole thing off there and pull all that crap. So one, this is ridiculous. Everyone knows you should at least mount your fuel pump. Got our hoses started here and guys, you want to mount it, how unprofessional. Professional. Now also professional, now these wires were hanging, so I wrapped them up in that fuel pump wire. That way when we plug that in, that'll keep it from falling. Of course we'll feed that up through there. Get us all tightened up top. That's the supply. We'll take it. If anyone knows what this is for, uh, comment down below. As far as I'm concerned, it's for going in the trash with all this other crap. I just decided to cut that because one, 
That is crappy aluminum anyhow. It ain't like it's a good stretch of copper or something. And then too, they kind of had it fished up through our lines and around our reservoirs and stuff. And I would rather not break any of that. Oh, especially considering we just got it all bled off today. So, I think that's where we end for this evening. Looky what we got here. Just getting straight to it. Slap that belt on, then we're gonna get the radiator in. Leave her loose so we can get all this in and aligned and happy where the fan ain't rubbing. Clearance check, everything's good. Little loopy dooby never hurt on the upper radiator side of these. She's always a tight fit. I like to leave our uh, new stickers on there. That way we flex on people. It's like, look, damn right I can afford a new radiator hose. Not to brag or anything. Not to flex these financial muscles. I got our lower radiator hose on too. Uh, I almost forgot to put all the nuts in our fan and tighten them down. That would have been interesting. Told y'all we were gonna go back with that good looking green stuff. We're gonna pop our Lev R vent back on. And we're sitting pretty good here. Uh, I guess next we're gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, tune up our ignition. So down here we got number one and that basically just fell off there. So I'm gonna pull all of our plugs. Pull our coil wire. Pop the clips for our cap. Have a little look-see. Hey, that thing looks pretty good. Uh, we definitely didn't have to replace that. Check our rotor here. Uh, she's a little dirty. A little corrosion there on the end. I'd say that one right there is a little more gooder anyhow. Yeah, our cap's got a little more of a sheen and shine to her too, so we definitely ain't gonna hurt nothing replacing it. There we go. All the plugs really look in pretty good shape. Spark plug gap shall be 29 to 33 thousandths. Basically set it to whatever you want. This old book's just firing from the hip on what it can be. You give me the choice and I'm going with 33 thousandths. We need it since uh, not all of them did, but ours come with the deluxe blaster coil kit. As you know, most coils just send out a spark. Ours uh, is special. It sends the spark out, takes it through the deluxe box kit up here, amplifies it by 100,000, then sends it out. That looks like premium gappage if I've ever seen it. With all them tightened down, we're ready to put some new wires on her. One, three, four, two. Oh, that feels good when they actually pop on the cap good and they pop on the plug good. Here lately, plug wires are hit and miss. Of course, if we want it to ride the light, then you got to have a good premium coil wire on there as well. Oh, don't jinx me now. You better... Boy, if you don't pop on there, I'm going to pop something. Come on. Oh, tight fit. All right, we did clutch. Uh, the hydraulics of the clutch brakes. Little brake flushing. Uh, timing belt and all, that, all those goodies on the engine. We got a gas tank. Kind of mess with our fuel pump and stuff. I can't, I think she may be ready to kind of fire up. Of course, it may fire up, but to keep her running, probably need to get a little petrol in her. Don't y'all worry about that, okay? I see a couple people wanna know what's going on with the Datsun. 
the old Datsun King delivery, okay? When I get it back, I'll show you what's going on with it. It's hard to, you know, show you when I ain't got the truck. I guarantee you it ain't gonna do deadly if we don't uh, do something with that. Going live. After successfully doing all 37 steps to get that breather on, uh, on the last little thing there, she started running funny. So I think our luck with this carburetor just ran out. Uh, it wants to run. It ain't like we got a big old vacuum leak or like ignition's messed up or something i actually don't think it's giving it enough fuel uh not because we didn't put a fuel filter on this thing or anything and crap may have got in there and clogged something up or you know just we're just assuming at this point we don't really know uh what i do know is turning up the idle a little bit got it sucking more fuel and it lets it run good enough I'm afraid to do those little clips. Last time I did them, my truck messed up. Let's top off this radiator and uh, let's see if it'll back outside. Clutch and brakes feel pretty good. It's a shame that carburetor decided to mess up on us. That was my first time picking that up. It ain't too bad. We got our triple balled hooker back in. The good thing about this one is we've got a title, guys. So she's uh, she's road ready. Let's take her to get a little gas in the lane. Hopefully our carburetor don't mess up on us anymore. and. We can make her to the gas station and back. Man, this thing's quiet. Uh, whatever bearing I was hearing going bad, it ain't making the noise no more. This thing rides like a Cadillac compared to how it was riding before. Uh, that didn't feel too bad on all these bumps. What I'm saying is we may have done this thing a little good actually. And uh, I also may have just pulled in on the wrong side. Give me about a 20 point turn and we'll get her situated here. Usually we get that old get her done 91, but right now we're gonna use some cinder to ha uh, have an 87. Those aren't us, so uh, looking underneath here, I don't see no leaks or nothing, which is good. First mission successful. Let's go see what the old boys are up to. She didn't have that flat spot in that car, but once you get past the, the first little flat spot, she does all right. Now, I guarantee you, you ain't gonna win no drag race in this rig. Hell, I don't even think you're allowed to say the word race when you're in this rig. Well, we made her across town anyhow. Uh, we'll celebrate with a soda pop. Yeah, old Sleck in the hot rod over there. 
and then we're gonna get jb out of here in the roadster and guys we're gonna call this mission complete okay we made her across town carburetor may need some work uh we're not gonna talk about all that all right that's that's gonna be for another date what matters is uh mechanically are you allowed to be in video no, that's some statute of limitations right now I there, got a couple don't be bring no subpoena around me or nothing trying to seize me later on uh guys are pretty happy with it mechanically it's all right we're gonna make our four-wheel drive i don't know how quick or how soon you know could be four months it could be four hours we may start on it uh but i'm gonna call this a wrap we got a lot going on with the family tonight i do believe me and mr mcgraw's gonna go get some lunch and feed that old tummy and i appreciate all y'all watching now y'all know we're on the instagram or we're on the patreon uh puddingsfabshop.com where you get all that good merchandise oh yeah i almost forgot i got the boonie hat on these things are expensive to make but i think we ordered maybe 30 of them or so ish there ain't a lot they're kind of pricey but it costs us a lot to have them made so they're on the website too with all of our stickers t-shirts all that good stuff and uh yeah don't forget sitting on your ass won't finish your project my projects to eat and then i gotta clean up that shop then we gotta get yeah we still got a busy weekend ahead y'all i brought my saws off <laughs> <laughs> need some help <laughs> That van said gentle ride, it won't be after we build a lift kit. <laughs>